Hi Flosstube, it's Robin. You have found me and you've come back. Thank you. You have found my channel. It's Lady Robins and this is a channel all about cross stitch. So if cross stitch is your thing, you're in the right place. If cross stitch isn't your thing, I want to stick around and find out maybe it can become your thing. So for people that have subscribed to my channel, thank you. For my commenters, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And for those of you that are new, hit the subscribe button. See what I'm up to every week. It will be about cross stitch. That's what we're probably going to talk about each and every week. All right. So you know that every week we have to figure out what our Starbucks location is. So today, recognize this guy. We're in San Antonio. I love this mug. I love the, the cute little red interior. My favorite drink at Starbucks is a flat white. So I tried to make myself a flat white at home. It's not bad. Sadly, Starbucks does them better. But we do what we can, right? With our home equipment. So I made myself a mock flat white to get me through the video. So what's new with you guys? Have you had a good week? I had an awesome week because I had five days off in a row. It was lovely. It was great. I was able to spend quite a bit of time stitching spend lots of time with family, which was great, and just relax and hang out. And oh my gosh, it was the first time I thought, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to be retired. <laughs> I'm way too young to be having those thoughts, but I can see the appeal of being retired. It was great. I had five days to do my thing and not have to be any place at a particular time. That was divine. Of course, this week we're back to the, back to our regular schedule, going to work, doing all our activities, getting ourselves to and from things. But it was sure nice to have that break. And what was even better, my husband took two days off. So we actually had four days together. So that was awesome. We had a great time. And one of the things we did was we drove down and visited his parents. And his father is a World War II Marine veteran. He is 99 years old. And it's always um, interesting to go down and talk with him and listen to his memories. If you ask him about his experiences in World War II, he doesn't have anything to tell you. Nothing happened. He was there. It was over. He came home. But every once in a while, he'll sneak in a little story. So this time when we visited, he was playing his harmonica. He plays harmonica beautifully. He plays by ear. He can't read music. But if he knows the tune, he can play it on the harmonica. And so he started playing the harmonica. And then this story slipped out. He was talking about when he was in the, he was in the Battle of Tarawa. All those, the, that island, I don't know, battles, those island battles right at the end of World War II that was so pivotal in turning the war around towards the Allies. Anyway, he was there and he said, you know, this, this harmonica is not the harmonica I had when I was in the war. And we were like, oh, okay, well, tell us about that. And he said, well, you put all your gear on one ship and my harmonica was in, in the gear bag on that ship. We were like, okay. And he said, yeah, that ship got just sunk. So my harmonica is on the bottom of the ocean, my, my one I had during the war. And he goes, so I, you know, I bought this other one later on. And we were just like, that's amazing. 
We'd never ever heard my heard that story. I said to my husband driving home, have you ever heard that? And he goes, never, never heard that. And that is so typical of my father-in-law. He will just slide out a little World War II story in the middle of another conversation. And if you ask him to expand on it, he was like, eh, you know, that's what happened. Like one of the things that we found really interesting, um, we learned this a couple of years back, when he was on Tarawa, he was actually um, captured by the Japanese and he was held, he and another guy, for three days. And miraculously, they were able to escape, which is very, very unusual if you know anything about World War II. And he said if they hadn't have escaped, he knows for sure that they would eventually have been killed. And again, it was one of those, those um, moments where that story just slipped out. And my husband went and talked to his brothers and his sister and said, have you ever heard this story? And they said, no, we've never ever heard that story. So it's always interesting to go and visit my in-laws because it just seems like when we're all together and he's not under any pressure, these amazing stories come out. So to people that have um, served in the military who are part of military families, you have my <laughs> respect. I cannot believe what you guys went through. and. Yeah, that's how I feel about my father-in-law. I can't believe what he went through. And he's he's still alive and kicking. At 99, he went to um, a Veterans Day brunch with fellow veterans on, um, on Sunday, on the 10th, on the day before Veterans Day. And he came back and he had had a wonderful time. So anyway, um, that was kind of... A highlight of our weekend was getting to spend a little bit of time with him and hear yet another little gem about what um, experiences he had during that um, pivotal time of his life. So anyway, thank you veterans. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So after all of that, um, I don't have any patriotic cross stitch to show you, but I do have other types of cross stitch. So last week for the School of Magical Stitches, I was telling you I had uh, my week planned out and I got almost all of it done. I got like, what, seven eighths of it done. <laughs> so one of the things that I told you I was gonna stitch on was my pretty little Seattle piece. And I was able, let me consult my notes here. I was able to use that for two of my challenges. So I got almost 450 stitches in on this guy. So I um, want to show you what I was able to complete last week. So the cool thing is, if I can get it in the shot here, um, I was able to completely finish the mountain. The mountain is 100% done. And I got the outline of the second cloud stitched. And then for those of you that are in Seattle, this is um, Smith Tower. So I got um, a good start on Smith Tower. So Pretty Little Seattle is coming along nicely. I am very happy with the progress that I made on that guy. And what's funny is I thought, oh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fit, fill in the cloud over here because it's it's just filled in with the white with white the what is that number Thir 3865 <laughs> I'm slowly relearning my DMC numbers because this is all stitched in DMC so I thought oh on Sunday I've got a stitchy meetup at the Renton Library and I'll talk about that in a little bit but I thought well a good project at a stitching meetup is something where you um, you know, do the same color over and over. You don't have to count. I thought, oh, this will be perfect. Completely forgot. <laughs> That's why it's not filled in because I left it for the stitchy meetup and then I forgot to bring it with me. So that's pretty funny, but that's typical me. I make these big plans and then forget about them and move on to something else. So what I did work on when I was at the stitching meetup 
was my prairie schooler Santa. So what I was able to get done this week on the Santa is, let's see if you can see that. I was able to, um, I worked on the second sledder. Um, I had to frog out the hat. I had decided to do um, a color conversion and I'd decided that uh, blue hats would be oh so delightful and it was oh so dreadful. <laughs> so I had to frog out the um, blue and then I was able to um, get going on the sledder. So um, yeah, so I got that worked on and I'm always amazed when I look at look at my stitching because I think how can that be 215 stitches but that's what that is that little that little guy was 215 stitches so that was um, one of the second items that I stitched on this week so I took that to the stitching meetup and then because each task you have to do 200 stitches I know I've talked about this before um, I decided for one of my other tasks, um, what was I going to do? Oh, I needed, I needed a task where I had a repeating, it has a repeating pattern. And I know I showed this last week, but, um, wait, can't show you the chart, breaking the rules. Um, I realized that there, way down here on the bottom, you can see that, is a, you know, a pattern that repeats. So I worked on the fresh picked pumpkins. And even though I didn't work on the repeat part, it didn't say it had to be on the part. It just had to be on a pattern that had a repeat. I was able to get more pumpkins filled in. So I got 200 and 11 stitches can't forget those 11s they're important <laughs> so i got 211 stitches in on this guy so that's fun i got that um good progress on that and then the last thing that i stitched on um, for homework last week is I worked on my old, 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 you've seen this before, um, Spirit of Cross Stitch Festival Sampler. Remember this guy? I show this every once in a while from 1993. So what I, um, what I did on this guy is on this side, I worked on the border a little bit and I did this at the stitching meetup, which you know what that means. I miscounted. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got it. I wish I would have remembered that <laughs> I'd outlined the clouds because that would have been a much better thing to work on. Um, so after I got my 200 stitches in on Santa, I pulled this guy out and yeah, I got a miscount, so I'm gonna have to frog some stuff. Poo, right? Oh well. But um, I was I was telling the girls that you know this right in here. I don't know if you can see that very well with my shirt reflecting in the back, but that is using um, that Krynic, um gold. I don't know. What do you call it? It's not, it's not really floss. It's like braid, gold braid. That's what it is. And I was saying how I really have a hard time working on this piece because in the middle, this stuff in here, I can't really, if I can hold that up there so you can see it. Yeah, if you can see that. So that is also supposed to be stitched using that gold Krynic braid and I hate that stuff. I absolutely hate that stuff. So I was reminded because I forget this from time to time. I was reminded that 
Just because the pattern calls for it doesn't mean I have to do it. Ding, 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 ding. So, with that thought in mind, I went down to Joann's and I picked up some of that, some of those light effect flosses. You see these? So I picked these guys up and I'm trying to decide if one of these could be used in there. Now, this gold is as close to that Krynic gold braid in color as they come. This would be this would be actually a perfect match. But I'm kind of digging that purple. I I kind I kind of like that. So I haven't decided, and then of course here's the super light one, which really matches, um, which is kind of between the dark purple on the side and then the lighter purple that the um, alphabet is stitched in. It's kind of right between them, if you can see that. So anyway, I don't know what I'm gonna use. Now what's, what's terrible is I asked my son you know, for his opinion, what would he, what would you do, honey, if it's your, if it's your piece, and of course, you know, he's 15, rolling the eyes, mom, why do you ask me these questions? <laughs> he's right, why do I ask him these questions? He couldn't care less. <laughs> so, he thinks that I should go with the gold that's closest to um, the Krynic gold braid, but I'm leaning towards the dark purple. Leave me a comment. What do you think? What would you pick? Would you, would you, A, would you go with these? Would you, because there's no way I'm ever gonna finish this if I have to use that Krynic thread, that braid. I don't know why I can't say braid, but I can't say braid. Um, <laughs> you'll just have to forgive me. Um, what would you use? Would would you use these light effects? I think they're really super pretty and I've never stitched with them. So I don't know, do you use two strands? If, if you've worked with this stuff, would you leave me a comment? Leave me some pro tips because I'm not exactly sure how to use this stuff, but I really like it. And so yeah, what would you do? Would, would you, a, would you keep a gold? Would you change the color? And do you have any idea how many strands I would use? I mean, would you would you use two or would you go with one? Because it's um, it's not it's not I'm not cross stitching. It's a specialty stitch. I am. Let's see here. Uh, I am making. I am making triangular ray stitches. <laughs> like, that's quite a fancy, fancy name, huh? Yeah. So, um, anyway, I'm just, yeah, I, 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 I'd love some input. Tell me, tell me what you think. If, if you think you would, um, if you would, if you would make that change or tell me if you would like, oh, don't use that stuff at all. If you hate Krynic Braid, you're going to hate this even worse. Just go with floss. Just straight out, go with floss. Pick one of the purples in the pattern and be happy. Let me know. I'd, I'd, I'd love some input. So that's, um, that's what I did last week. Those were my, um, excuse me, those were my progress, the progress up, updates for you. So it was, it was more stitching time than I've had in a couple of weeks. So it felt really nice to get back to doing the School of Magical Stitches challenge. So, so now that I'm kind of, you know, back on that horse again, what have I got coming up for this week? So this week, I, I write them in my planner. Are you guys planner people? I'm like a total planner person. I've got, I have got 
the big kahuna planner. Yeah? I jokingly call this my brain, but I'm not kidding because if I don't know where it is, I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing this week. Even though I've got it in my iPhone, I have to look at it on paper. It's, it's amazing how paper driven I am still. It's, I trust it if it's down on paper as opposed to, well, maybe, maybe I said the date wrong when I put it in, into my iPhone calendar. So anyway, um, again, we have five tasks in the School of Magical Stitches. And the first task, and I'm already well on my way to completing this one, is you have to stitch on a pattern that you um, either inherited or were gifted. Ta-da! Melanie Smith gifted me this pattern at the Fall Fling, which I talked about last week. And so I get to use this for my first uh, task in School of Magical Stitches. And then here is my progress. Can you see that? Ah, oh, I just think this is so cute. Now, what is so fun is on this little guy, I'm gonna take it out of the plastic so I can shove it up to the cam ca camera for you. Um, there are a few uh, beads and you know, she of course didn't have ex extra beads to give me, but one of the things right here, focus, focus, focus. Is that focus? Probably. Um, there's supposed to be a little acorn charm sitting on top of this acorn, but you know, I don't know who grabbed this here. I think I've got a different charm, which was given to me at Fall Fling. And I had a couple things still to shout out from Fall Fling. And one of them was from Gazelle's Needlework. We got this cute little bag with a gazelle on it. And there's, there's their card. Oh, excuse me. There's our card. And it's two sisters. They're um, Jennifer and Renee. And inside this little bag, oh my gosh, we got a cute little charm. So you could attach this to your um, flosses. And then also we got a little charm. Oops, can you see that? It's a squirrel. And I'm thinking that this squirrel charm might look super cute on top of that acorn. I don't know if it's too big, but right now I'm thinking that that guy, you see him? might end up on my little chart. So I've got two things that I was gifted to put on that piece. So that's my thought anyway, right now. So at the, um, at the moment, I'm already up to, uh, I think I've got right about 450 stitches in on this. So I'm definitely going to get a finish on that this week because the other thing that um, one of the other tasks that they have, I don't have anything that works for it. Um, you're supposed to stitch on a skeleton. Now I know we've, we've just gotten through with Halloween and there's you know lots of patterns out there that have skeletons on them, but I am not stitching any. I have you know zero patterns with a skeleton. So for magical stitches, you can double the number of stitches for something and call it penalty stitches. I think that's what they call it. Anyway, I'm like, well, I'm probably gonna end up having to do penalty stitches for the skeleton homework. So between um, the um, gifted task and the skeleton task, I'll totally have enough stitches to polish that off. So that'll be good. And then the next thing I'm supposed to do is figure out something that you would put in your travel bag when you're traveling. And I was thinking I'd probably put Santa in my travel bag because he's magic, right? 
and he travels and so Santa could drop me off places that I needed to go and then I wouldn't have to buy airfare. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to make something up because I really want to get some more um, stitches in on Santa this week. So that's um, that's kind of my spin for what I'd put in my travel bag. And then the next one I'm supposed to do is something that would be considered a family heirloom. And I'm thinking I'm thinking Pretty Little Seattle could become a family heirloom. So I think I'll use that for my fourth task. And then my fifth task is um, Tonks and Lupin in the, um, in the Harry Potter books. They're expecting a baby. And so we have to stitch on something um, that the baby would need. And I haven't figured out which of my whips is going to be something that the baby needs, but uh, I don't know. I, that one I haven't worked out yet. I haven't I haven't figured out a, a silly story for that one yet. But anyway, who knows? I I might figure out that um, the baby needs a purple sampler, <laughs> so I can work with the light effects floss. Anyway, um, I I like I said I haven't figured that one out, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. You know, and I had um, I had another shout out um, that um, I need to do. When I was at Fall Fling, I got the cutest little mandala needle minder. Do you see that? And this came from Melanie Smith. So Melanie, thank you for this adorable needle minder. I can't wait to um, put it in action. So um, I appreciate you giving that to me and you know those are my colors you I don't know if you can see that but I've got um, I've got a love for blues and greens and that's what's on here so it's perfect so I thank you for that okay a uh, couple couple things I just wanted to mention I went to a stitching meetup last Sunday and we had 11 um, Pacific Northwest stitchers get together and we had a wonderful time. I met um, even more local stitchers so that was fun. Um, we already have the next two dates picked. I've been trying to do the meetups on Sundays. In December the meeting room is full down at the Renton Highlands Library. It's a King County Library. So I had to go with a uh, Saturday. So it is the first Saturday in December, if you're available. We have the meeting room available from 12 to five, and we're gonna get together and stitch. I figure we might as well do it at the beginning of December because the closer you get to Christmas and Kwanzaa and all those things, the busier people get and the less time you have to um, break away from family. So first Saturday and then I just reserved um, January's date they have an opening on let's see here Sunday the 19th of January from 1 to 5 again at Renton Highlands so next two dates for Pacific Northwest stitching meetup is on the books so come and hang with us all right um, last piece of business is I had talked about um, doing a few uh, floss tube shout outs on my last video and I wanted to, to tell you the new people that I've discovered I'm sure some of them you probably already know but just in case I just wanted to shout shout some folks out so Becca at Sombre Stitches. I think she now has three floss tubes out and this girl can finish things. If you need to watch somebody with amazing finishes, Becca's your gal. Yep, you gotta watch her. Um, also, um, I just I did talk about Melanie Smith because she gave me the pattern and the needle minder, but her floss tube is Melanie underscore Smith 
underscore yarns and threads and I think she's got 68 or 69 floss tubes so go watch Melanie she has tons of great content to watch I haven't been able to see them all but I'm working on it Melanie I'm working on it um, also uh, I just mentioned um, Gazelle's Needleworks Jen and Renee they are delightful I think they have four floss tubes so check those two girls out they are super fun and we had dinner with the two of them and it couldn't have been lovelier. You guys will thoroughly enjoy their floss tube. Um, a couple others that I've discovered, and you guys probably know them already, but I just wanted to put them out there. I've come across Homesteading on the Homefront, and that's Lynette, and she's wonderful. You guys watch Homesteading on the Homefront, and right behind her, I discovered Hello from Liz Matthews. And I think she's got eight, six, something like that. Anyway, she is another one. I just instantly fell in love with her and the things she's showing and stitching. So head over, watch her. Um, another one, she has been around uh, a little bit longer than me because she's got 19 videos, is Java Girl Stitches. And she's wonderful. She was at Fall Fling, so I actually got to meet her in person, and she's delightful. So if you're not watching Java Girl Stitches, you can fix that. She's wonderful. So um, that's Christy, and she is fantastic. Go watch her. And I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that I've discovered lately. Um, I might have mentioned her two floss tubes ago, but if you're not watching the Joyfield Stitcher, head on over. She's great. And then the last one that I am thoroughly enjoying is Amy Loves Toads. And Amy has amazing, amazing stitching. And I'm not sure that girl sleeps because she gets more done in a couple of weeks than I get done in a month and a half. So apparently I'm a slow pokey stitcher. But anyway, um, those are those are ones that I've discovered, ones that I think you guys would enjoy. So if you guys have um, a floss tube or an Instagram account, put it in the comments below. Let me know so I can find you because I love to sit around and look at floss tubes and then zoom over to Instagram. So yeah, if you're a fellow floss tuber or an Instagrammer, don't hesitate. Put your put yourself out there. Put me put your put your information in the comments so that I can follow you back. I would love to do that. Okay, the last last thing that um, I want to do is I want to do a giveaway, and I've never done this, so I'm gonna just give it a try. I have some old um, cross stitch and country craft magazines and. I'm over 500 subscribers, so I thought I would do a giveaway in honor of breaking 500. So I'm going to tell you right now, for this giveaway at least, I will mail the stuff anywhere. But you just have to let me know, okay? So in the comments below, just tell me I would like the magazines. And these are not in pristine condition, okay? They don't even have covers anymore. So, but the patterns are all in here. The content is all in here. So what I've got is, I've got the January, February 1986 issue, okay? Like I said, there's no covers. I've got the March, April 1986 issue. And then right behind that, I have May, June, 1986. Now the, the um, person who had these before me actually had marked some patterns, which I thought was super cute. One of the patterns, all you cat lovers out there are gonna love this. This is called um, Nantucket Quilts, and it's got an adorable quilt and a cat. And in one of the um, other issues, there is a companion, and this is um, 
the Amish quilt in cats. So there, there's a little series between um, these magazines. So let me know if you would like these. Um, I'll, I'll ship it to any place. I want to thank you guys, all 500 plus of you, for subscribing to my channel. And yeah, I'll send these out to you. Like I said, they're not in pristine condition, but the patterns are there. Um, you know, the, the, the photography of, of the pieces is all there. So um, I want to thank you for subscribing. And again, just comment below. Um, I ask that you please be a subscriber. Please don't say the word giveaway because I don't want to end up on, you know, some sort of feed with trolls. So just say I'd like to stitch the magazines and I'll um, do a random number picker thing that I've seen others do and we'll get you, get you these magazines. So thank you for stopping by. Shoot me. Uh, a comment or an email. I'll try to get this uploaded tonight. It usually takes me until the next day though to get my show notes posted. So I'll try to get this posted on Wednesday and show notes up on Thursday. So hope you guys have time to stitch and that you're having a good week and I'll see you next time. Bye!